Hi, friends. Today we will learn what are matter cycles. We will also learn about the carbon cycle. So let's start. We study the composition of our atmosphere. It is seventy-eight point zero eight percent nitrogen and twenty point ninety-five percent oxygen. That is about ninety-nine percent of the atmosphere, and only one percent constitutes all other gases like argon, xenon, neon, hydrogen, helium, krypton, and carbon dioxide. And the composition never changes. Why? Why does the composition of our atmosphere always remain the same? Why is it always seventy-eight point zero eight percent nitrogen? How is it always twenty point ninety-five percent oxygen? How does it happen? We all use these gases on a daily basis. All plants breathe in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. All of us animals, including humans, inhale oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. All the gases are used during combustion, and so many other reactions occur. So, how does the basic composition of the atmosphere remain constant? We will be learning the answer to this question. Our Earth is a closed system. That is, nothing can enter or leave the Earth or its atmosphere, unless some unusual thing happens, like the entrance of a meteorite in its environment or the launching of satellites. This is how something goes out of the Earth or enters the Earth's environment. Otherwise, the Earth is a closed system. Nothing enters or leaves the Earth's atmosphere. Water, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or all types of matter maintains its percentage value in the Earth's atmosphere. Any matter, let's say water, is consumed by various living organisms and is returned back to the environment in a cyclic manner, and we call this the water cycle. There are many more cycles like this. The nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, rock cycle, etc., and all these cycles are called matter cycles. In this assignment, we will be learning about the carbon cycle. First of all, how does carbon enter the atmosphere? Carbon enters the atmosphere as carbon dioxide from three sources: respiration, combustion, and decomposition. I repeat, carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere through respiration, combustion, and decomposition. Let's first see the sources of combustion. The sources of combustion can be combustion of fuel in vehicles, combustion of fuel in industries, forest fires, and volcanoes. So all types of burning of fuels releases carbon into the atmosphere. Now let's learn the sources of respiration. All animals respire and release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Now the third source of carbon in the atmosphere is decomposition. Decomposition of dead remains of all plants and animals releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the three sources of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are respiration, combustion. And decomposition. Now let's see who consumes this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is consumed by producers or the plants to make carbohydrates with the process of photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide is used by producers. That is, all the plants and carbon dioxide becomes part of these producers. Now these producers are consumed by the consumers. That is, all herbivores and omnivores, and then the carbon dioxide becomes a part of these herbivores and omnivores. These herbivores and omnivores are consumed by carnivores, and thus carbon becomes a part of the carn. So carbon becomes a part of all the producers and consumers. Now, what happens when these producers and consumers die? 
the dead remains of both producers and consumers is decomposed by decomposers. That is, the carbon in their bodies is returned to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. And these dead remains of plants and animals, that is, buried for thousands of years, turns into fossil fuels, and we use them for combustion. That too releases carbon into the atmosphere. So, this is how carbon dioxide, or carbon, circulates in the atmosphere. Let's repeat. Carbon enters the atmosphere through respiration, through combustion, and decomposition. Sources of respiration are all the consumers. They take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Sources of combustion are combustion of fuels in the vehicles, in the industry, forest fires, volcanoes, and all types of burning of fuels releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Third one is decomposition. The dead remains of plants and animals decomposed by decomposers that convert carbon present in the dead remains into carbon dioxide and release it into the atmosphere. These dead remains, when buried for thousands of years, also turns into fossil fuels, that is, diesel and petrol that we all use for our vehicles. Combustion of these fuels also releases carbon into the atmosphere. So the carbon dioxide is used by all the plants and animals, and all the plants and animals release this carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere one way or the other. Now let's have a look at the circulation of carbon in the sea and oceans. In the sea, aquatic life convert some of the carbon in their diet into calcium carbonate, which is used to make their shells, and these shells eventually form a type of stone, which is called limestone. And these stones, when brought to the surface of the earth, releases carbon back into the atmosphere. Now let's see how it happens. Atmospheric carbon combines with water to form carbonic acid. And this acid, when it falls on the surface of rocks, dissolves the rocks by a process called chemical weathering. And carbon is released back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide gas, and also as dissolved carbon, which finds its way back into the river water and ultimately seawater. Now let's revise the carbon cycle in a cyclic manner. Carbon dioxide enters the air by burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are used in factories, vehicles, thermal power plants, etc. Carbon dioxide also enters the atmosphere with respiration by all animals. Carbon dioxide also enters the atmosphere through volcanoes and forest fires. Carbon dioxide also enters the atmosphere by the process of decomposition of dead and decaying organic matter, as in dead remains of all the plants and animals. Carbon dioxide also enters the atmosphere through the process of weathering of rocks. Yes, weathering of rocks also releases some carbon into the atmosphere. Now this carbon in the atmosphere is used as atmospheric carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. All plants respire and take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is also used by aquatic plants during photosynthesis. And aquatic animals use carbon dioxide in their diet to form calcium carbonate. This forms shells of some of the aquatic animals. And these shells in turn form limestone and this limestone returns carbon dioxide to the atmosphere upon weathering and various other processes. Carbon dioxide is also returned to the atmosphere by respiration of marine life. So this is how carbon is used from the atmosphere and returned back to the atmosphere in the same amount. And the carbon content of the atmosphere remains constant, that is 0.03%. So friends, today we learned about the carbon in the carbon cycle.